Brilliant. Okay, great. So everybody uh, in the Discord, in the Ponies Online Discord, thanks for waiting and everyone joining in via the Elements of Justice YouTube channel. Hello, hello, hello. Uh, we are going to get straight into it. I now need to do a multitude of different things as well as try and organize two different stream packages. So please do bear with me if something breaks, Flame Guard 2 or me. I'm quite happy with that. But thank you all for tuning in today. So uh, first things first, I'm going to get us started with a sort of a brief overview of how this panel format, if it will work, will work. Uh, first of all, there are five of us. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, I can count. Uh, we're going to introduce ourselves. I'm going to give a bit of a background to Elements of Justice. Uh, if anything is broken, if anything isn't broken, or if it's all working, just someone in the panel team, i.e., you know, peeps, arts, please tell me, and I will immediately Hi. fix it. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, and then at the end of that, after a quick introduction, going to get straight into Q&A, so we won't hopefully take up too much time. Uh, this is the first time I've ever done an online panel type of setup, so please bear with. Something will break. It always does. Um, I also request that you try and keep things to relevant experiences of the people on the panel. Uh, there is a lot of things that we can answer, but you know, this is an opportunity for me to present some of the wonderful people within this team. So please do direct questions towards them on what they've done. Um, and a bad question, as I always like to say, is the one that's never asked. So, you know, don't be afraid to ask something, please. We, we love to talk about EOJ. We love to talk about ourselves. There's nothing, uh, there's nothing really off the table there. Um, and as you probably, if you were here for PPW's panel just before, it's great. There's so much that one can talk about, even just in like a single section, like a community. But I'm being rude. I have yet to introduce myself properly. So I am Mr. G. I'm the owner and director of Ace Attorney Elements of Justice. I've been with the team for roughly three and a bit years, coming up to three and a half years now, actually, uh, with being a director for about one and a half years. Um, I started initially as an audio engineer uh, before I moved into doing public relations, sort of promotional work, and also directing the Bonds of Justice side series. Um, if you don't know what that is, give a bit of an overview in that later. Don't worry. Um, I like to think of myself as a chaos chaos alignment. Uh, I take that literally from the D and D. Uh, anything that can go wrong will go wrong, and I'm usually the one who instigates it. And I'm also a vehement cheese hater. So if anyone here is, you know, a diehard evangelical about pizzas, I'm sorry. Yes, I do eat my pizzas without cheese, and I will not apologize for that fact. Um, but when I'm not looking like my dear self, I'm usually, you know, screaming out into the heavens that I'm on fire. So uh, if you want a, a more realistic interpretation of how I look. That is me, in essence. <laughs> I'll pass you on to the first of, uh, of the wonderful people who's joining me today, who you've already met, if you've been here already. <laughs> I'm going to reintroduce myself because some people came here for EOJ, I'm pretty sure. So, hi, I'm Pretty Pegasus Wings, or PPW, or sure, whatever you want to call me, everyone's got a different name. Pretty Pegasus, Pretty Pegasus. Uh, that is my main OC, Azure, she's a Cardozoan. That is just a giant fluffy lion horse. She is maximum floof. I had internal affairs, been on EOJ for four years, do VA, animation, and more. Um, I guess jack of all trades is the word. I'm, I've at least touched most, if not every department in some way. I, uh, oh yeah, I should probably mention, uh, I am actually an animation major, so me being in animation on the project uh, is kind of like a dream. For, like kind of like the beginning of a dream probably a good way of putting it so direct i direct my own projects as i mentioned conquest and glass wings i have been into D, &D module creation just fun little facts uh things i've just been up to uh if you ever want to check them out it's on empire productions uh, i they're going to you know there's not a lot right now because i had to stall for years uh and conquest is absolutely going to change very soon but for the better uh but yeah I, i'm looking to finishing those eventually I am the one responsible for most cursed memes. You're welcome. Yeah, that's right. That cursed meme, EOJ meme you're thinking about, that was probably me. Send, send all insurance claims to PPW. I'll pass everybody <laughs> her information after this panel. Uh, next, we have Evan. Yo, my name's Evan. Nice to meet all of you. I am one of the writers on EOJ, and it's been pretty it's been pretty good for about a year now. I've been uh, one of the lead writers over there.
the parts I've been there for. Um, oh, the audio went out? The audio is full gone on YouTube. <laughs> That's the worst. Apologies there. For some reason, I got kicked out of... Uh... Out of the, I, I got kicked out of the stage. Not sure how that happened. It did happen. I think we're back though. Apologies. Whoops. Okay, it's all right. Uh, do you want me to restart on that one then? Let's keep going. As I said, technical difficulties were bound to okay. strike, and Guard Two apparently came and kidnapped me. So, <laughs> no problem. Yeah, I've been on the uh, the AOG team for about a year now. Uh, ever since we started producing Case Three, uh, I've also been a successful Kickstarter creator and made an entire D and D book based around coffee. It was a lot of fun. We had like some great reviews come back on that. It's not been publicly released yet, so I've just got that in my back pocket in case I ever just like want to have something fun happen. So maybe I'll release that in the future. And unfortunately, I can't tell you any of the spoilers surrounding the show that's classified information um sorry that's just how it goes guys brilliant thank you evan moving on we have cadet redshirt oh it's me hi <laughs> uh hi i voice sonata and applejack on the project i forgot what my slides all say there we go okay <laughs> Uh, so I guess I would also say I'm a jack of all trades. I'm a singer, voice actor, a uh, digital and traditional artist, and a streamer. Uh, uh, what else? Uh, I joined the team back in 2020 working. <laughs> Mr. G is dead. No. I know exactly what I'm doing. So here's the problem. I'm trying to watch the chat <laughs> in the um on my phone, and every time I go to look at yeah. the chat on my phone, it connects me via my phone. So please apologize. I'm gonna leave the Discord via my phone now. <laughs> oh dear, I see. Okay. <laughs> uh what was I saying? Okay, sorry. Uh joined the team back in 2020. Uh, working as the voices of Applejack and Sonata, and uh, as an artist, I did backgrounds, and now I'm doing concept art, uh, so I can't talk about those really anymore, <laughs> technically speaking. Um, but yeah, uh, I've been making online content since 2016, but most of it is on other people's channels, so like voice acting is definitely on everybody else's channels. My channel is like mainly singing song covers and original, making original songs. Uh, I also have a vendor table in the Ponies Online server uh, and on Kofi. It's the same like link uh, with a bunch of cute things and a lot of e EOJ merch. So please check it out. I'm drowning in stickers. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much, good Cadet. Thank you very much. Uh, and last but by no means hey, least. Hey, everyone. My name is MLP Arts, and I'm the team leader of the voice actors. Wait, first of all, am I coming through? I should probably check first. <laughs> Maybe, hopefully. I can hear you. I don't know if anyone YouTube else can, and people. I'm not going to check on my phone. <laughs> YouTube people, can you hear me? Yeah, we're good. Okay, cool. Um, I'm the team leader of the voice actors, and I am also a voice actor on Elements of Justice. I voiced Twilight, Rarity, Apple Bloom, Sweetie Belle, and Silver Spoon in Case 2. And I'm also a singer. I sing on my own channel. I make covers of My Little Pony and Thomas and Friends crossover song or thomas songs in my little pony voice uh, i joined the project in 2021 as a voice actor initially and then i became the team leader of the voice actors outside of eoj i am a part-time college student i'm a sophomore going for my second associate's degree and hello i keep it rated g with the exception of murder uh, which is actually not just thanks to EOJ. I also recently um, played Applejack in Lost Narrators, another Apple Sleep Experiment Part 2. So, uh, do you want to go check that out? Shame of self-promotion. We love it. We yeah. love it in this team. <laughs> uh, I was tempted to remove that Keeps It Right to G because I'm the only G here. I'm the only real Mr. G. No. Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> But no, there you go. So that's your panelists for today. Um, but 
Let's just give a quick introduction again to what Elements of Justice is, because you may be asking, what are we? Um, for those who have never ever seen Elements of Justice, do not know what it is. Uh, we're an online digital series. Uh, this is a small crest screen cap of the uh, YouTube channel itself. But more specifically, we are a combination of three uh, pieces of media. We are Ace Attorney Phoenix Wright, or more specifically just Ace Attorney, uh, covering from the beginning to uh, just after Dual Destinies. Uh, obviously, My Little Pony, uh, mostly focused uh, on the sort of season four, season five kind of like middle ground. So just after season four ends, but before season five begins. Um, and uh, our main inspiration was uh, the initial kind of combiner of these two mediums, uh, Turnabout Storm. Um, and if you uh, have never seen Turnabout Storm, highly recommend it. Uh, it's one of the sort of like older, legendary pieces of media from uh, the sort of early fandom years. And we are the direct sequel to that uh, piece. But we're not only just a huge channel and the combinations, we're also a large Discord community as well. Uh, there is a fan server and a link to that will be available at the end. So if you're interested in just coming along just to chat about the series or learning more, uh, that is always a good place to start. But your next question may be asking, well, who are we? And truth be told, that's not a really easy question to answer with words. Uh, so I'm going to give you a couple of screen caps instead. Uh, this is an insight into who is on our team. Uh, you may or may not notice some very interesting names there, people who uh, you'll also notice that a lot of them are potentially cut out as well because of the stream purposes. Uh, but this is generally how we organize uh, via Discord. Um, We've got a wide range of different team members uh, to fulfill in different roles. Uh, as you can see, I'll go into each of these roles in a little bit later. Um, but what's probably the craziest fact about all of this is that we're all volunteers. And that includes myself, uh, even though I'm director and owner. Uh, this is all just a, you know, an additional thing that we contribute to. So a large team with a lot of moving parts, uh, which we all put our spare time into, can take a lot of, lot of focus. Um, and it's even more interesting that we come from all over the world. So I'm from the United Kingdom, as you can probably tell. But, uh, you know, we've got people like Cadet Arts, Evan, PPW, who are from the States. We've also got people from Chile. We've got people in Europe, uh, Finland, you know, for example, of someone over in Korea. So we're all over the place. So, uh, yeah, we uh, we're a large group, to say the least. <laughs> um, oh, that was funky. Um, what are those teams, though, that I mentioned before? Well, we've got a plethora of different ones. Uh, I've given a little couple of nicknames, little funny reminder nicknames in case you want to kind of take something away. Uh, the big ones here, so writing, artist, concept, VA, uh, which arts and uh, PPW and uh, Cadet are all a part of. Writing, as Evan highlighted. Uh, leadership team, which involves pretty much everyone who you know, helps organize that. The pony, pony riggers, animators. But that's uh, just, as I say, one half because we've got audio engineers, musicians, video editors. Uh, you would think that for an animation kind of sort of online digital series that we wouldn't need animators. Um, but being a video editor in what we use, Adobe Animate, is a whole different form of art form than the actual animation itself. Uh, as well as some sort of supplementary teams, external affairs and internal affairs. Uh, the external lot is related to that Bonds of Justice I mentioned earlier, which is our side series. And we also have an automation team, which I will go into a little bit in about how they're useful later as well. Um, but I like to sort of uh, give them the nickname of the people who help us survive because uh, <laughs> there is so much that they do that makes our lives easier. And I, I, I would love to go into every bit, bit that they've done, but I'll only be able to give a little bit. Uh, a special shout out as well to the sound man, who is also my assistant director. So my number two, uh, who heads up this particular team. So that's kind of like a general overview of who we are. As I say, there's a lot of moving parts, lots of people, so I can't go into everyone. But you may be asking, where did this all kind of begin? Where did this all start? Um, so it initially started in, on June 5th, 2019. Uh, this was the very first day that we released an episode, 1-1, uh, one, one, uh, which we've later renamed The Trouble Production as a sort of homage to, uh, <laughs> to the literal Trouble Production that was to make this episode. Um, and we've also got a bit of sort of like, not necessarily lost media, but old media as well. So the channel's been around since about 2015 with some of the older videos on the screen now. Um, and so far, the first episode having premiered in 2019 has successfully garnered just shy of 400,000 views, uh, which is a massive, you know, big, big sort of moment of pride for everybody. Um, 
and you know we're constantly improving our craft as well uh which enables us to you know keep seeing growth so from our perspective i'd like to say we've come from very humble beginnings uh and you know we're regularly as i say moving up improving and upgrading and if you're a long time fan you'll know that the sort of quality of the animation has been improving with each case um, and if you you know aren't someone who's watched EOJ, I highly recommend going to watch 1-1. If you're just going to have something fun to do, watch it for about five minutes and then go to the most recent episode, Free 2, and you will see like that immediate shift in, in, in change. Um, it's quite remarkable when you go back and look at it, truthfully, even for myself. But again, you may be wondering, okay, so we know who you are, you, you know, we know what you do, we know all of that fun stuff, but why, why should you listen to us now? Why, why be interested in this? Well, uh for people who are like into the into the series already you'll know that uh, you know back in 24 2023 sorry i said that we wanted to release an episode every month um and for those who don't know why that's an important goal uh the whole of case two which is about eight episodes took two years to make and release so uh what i will say is case three is going to be bigger which is what we're airing currently that we are planning to do once a month, so an episode per month just sort of is the scale of how much we're looking to improve, how much more consistent, how much more engaged we're trying to be. And we're also trying to do live streams, kind of like how we're at these panels now, for example. Really want to get out there and show ourselves more. And again, to highlight the per month thing. Um, but on a less sort of like production focused uh, sense, we're also a team that really cares about those within, you know, our community. So some really cool examples to kind of highlight here. Um, one of our VAs uh, who voices uh, Luna, Prosecutor Luna, Pro Princess Luna, I should say. Well, um, Princess Luna in the series needs a new microphone. Thanks to all the support from people who watch the series, we were able to get her that. Um, and more like awesome, um, recently one of our team members was facing a situation where they were, you know, potentially going to lose their home. And thanks to the sort of amazing support of the community and the fact that we had such a wide base to, you know, promote this issue from, um, they needed 1,500. They didn't expect to get, you know, we gave it about maybe seven days or 30 days to raise it. We got it in three hours. So we, we were literally able to prevent a family from going homeless. Um, and again, that's one of our team members. So from my perspective, I'd like to say that we're a community that doesn't just, you know, talk big, doesn't want to just produce things like rapidly, quickly, because that's, you know, how productions kind of always focus. We try to look after the people within our team as well. Um, and yeah, if you're interested in helping out, there'll be ways you can do that. But we'll get to those, uh, we'll get to those later. I want to go quickly, because uh, after listening to PPW's presentation, uh, you'll probably all be kind of, uh, if you were here already, you'll all be kind of like shocked and amazed at like how much knowledge there is in, in just her alone. And everybody here on the panel today will have so much more to offer as well. So, you know, don't take these as the only things we're hoping to show you all. But uh, here are some top tips that I wanted to kind of highlight about, you know, running something as big as this. And the first one is project management, or as I like to call it, people management. The people in your team, they are the greatest allies you will ever have. Um, and they need you as much as you need them. You shouldn't neglect, you shouldn't assume things with them, and you shouldn't just let people get on with it. That doesn't necessarily mean you always need to be helicoptering people. Just don't pretend that people don't always, you know, make mistakes or won't understand something. Uh, I always like to remain, remember the adage, to assume is to make an ass out of you and me. Um, and I'm sure no one here wants to make an ass out of themselves, uh, cause I do that perfectly for the team at large anyway. Um, also expect a little bit of conflict, expect a little bit of stress, expect some fun because it always happens that way. Something crazy will go on. Uh, uh, something crazy will happen. Something mad will just occur. You, you just got to work as a person. Remember that people are people, but to give you a case study so that you don't kind of just think about that in a sort of generic conceptualized sense. Let's take, a, let's take a recent situation that we've been occurring within our team. So here is a sort of couple of screen caps of uh, how our sort of script kind of, you know, is formatted in Google Docs in terms of like, you know, there's scenes um, and we have a music list that we want to use, an OST for the episode. The question is, how do you translate that from writing and music before you even see a video? Because you've got to edit things first, but this is all being done in the conceptualized stage. Um, and even more confusing, like you have dialogue which, you know, you, you can play music in the back of your head, but you don't necessarily know whether or not this is going to properly um, line up with what people are saying. Or you don't know if that was the mood that people wanted. So a solution by, you know, again, 
respecting people, remembering that they will have means to do things, and by giving people that opportunity to show their talents, just create a simple place to um, you know discuss that, facilitate discussions, facilitate um, you know uh, arguments. Uh, you know, people like to think that arguments are always a bad thing. I disagree. I always think that if you're having an argument and you're having a good one, and that's a key distinction, a good one, you're showing more respect and trust for your individuals and for people around you than you know most times. Uh, um, there are also situations when you need to also be ready to prepare. And uh, if you, <laughs> you may, people may know these adages already. You may already, you may not know. But uh, this one I like as well. It's failing to prepare is preparation for failure. There's probably a, there's a different way of saying it, I think, but that's the way I'm going to present it today. Um, there's no short secret that if you follow DOJ for a while, you know that recent months have not been the easiest for us. There's been a lot of really, you know, terrible things that have happened. And we've, we've wobbled through, thankfully. Um, but, we could have done a lot more and a lot better had we prepared uh, for a lot of the things that did end up hitting us. And a lot of 2022 and 2023 was, ironically enough, preparing for the absolute uh, you know, worst case scenarios, trying to improve our processes. Um, and you know, don't mistake the fact that every minute of effort you put in today can save you hundreds of minutes later. It truly is like <laughs> investment is, oh, oh, some of the things that have come out, and I'll show you an example in the next case study, really really can just blow your mind at how much stress it can re remove from your shoulders, especially when you're on a scope of as large as ours. Um, one thing that I've learned recently as well is that when something goes wrong, act. Don't plan to act. You should have a plan in place, of course, um, on how you should act and have a formula, have a structure. You know, uh, if, if I take a lesson from PPW's panel just before, you know, make sure that you have a clear outlined uh, structure and a, you know, a way to deal with these things. But don't just sit around waiting. Don't just prepare to do something. Get in there, help out, make decisions. It saves you a lot of stress in the long term. So a case study. Uh, <laughs> just, just that image alone probably is enough for a lot of people. But the issue that we have is Adobe because it's a software of all time and it really knows how to make lives miserable. How do we make Adobe less bad? We make an automation. We, we've effectively, and this is one of the coolest things about this project, I have to say, We've effectively written a whole set of APIs and flash scripts to make the production happen. Um, you can find the GitHub if you want a little bit more information on what we do, but it's, you know, basically to sum up everything, because as I say, it's quite a big change. We've effectively rewritten the Adobe program to make it work. Um, and anyone who doesn't, you know, who uses Adobe and understands the problems that come with that software, you probably are shocked that when we say we can make it work well, it does. Stuff like scene generations and uh, rendering and just editing, we can cut from being like a two-month job to maybe three weeks. Uh, and I know that there's one example where something that took like 30 minutes to happen can be, has been cut down to six seconds with some of the amazing scripts that have been put in place. So there has been a ridiculous amount of energy put into investing and saving ourselves time. And that is what I mean about preparing. Prepare in advance, make your lives easier, and everyone will be happier. But there is a secret ingredient, and I've nicked this from PPW again. You'll, you'll notice I steal a lot from PPW. I'm sorry, peeps. Um, communication. This is the secret ingredient to our secret ingredient suit. Um, communicate, communicate, talk and nobody panics, and a wonderful phrase that PPW has ingrained into my mind that I will never get rid of as well is, if you can hear a rat fart, you're not doing it right. And it's true. It's genuinely the case that if you do not say something when something is you know going wrong or if there is a problem or you need something done you don't get things things won't happen you have to be willing to say and speak up um and if you know that gif where that comes from you probably know that it's got an alternative variant to it but uh, i won't i won't promote that one here because we're trying to keep it relatively clean so that's the end of the sort of introductory portion i'm going to leave some links up on the screen just barely to get started but now that I've taken up the first 25 minutes, I promise to Q&A. Um, so I'm going to quickly try and make sure that this is working still. Are we still alive, first and foremost? Or has, have people been trying to talk to me and I've just not listened to anyone? I'm good. Are we all good? We're all good. Okay. Yeah, we're great. all good. Great, yeah. great, great. <laughs> so uh, let us quickly do a fade back into the so studio for those on the YouTube channel. And uh, let's get started with the Q&A section. So everybody in the Discord, by all counts, please ask questions. 
Uh, I'm not sure if we can actually bring people onto the stage or not. I may be able to, question mark. Uh, so feel free to type or if it is possible to raise a hand, by all count, do so. Does any pony have a question? Questions, questions. And I'd like, if no one has a question, if anyone from the team would like to say anything, by all accounts, please do. Oh, there's some questions from the Twitch. Oh, that's wonderful. Yes, please do, Pat. Thank you very yeah. much. I keep forgetting that we have Twitch. a second stream we have, as well. Yeah, yeah I, I probably should have checked this Twitch stream. You've got Sorry, Twitch, Twitch people, you had a question for me. You know what? Thanks. If your Twitch people have questions, I can go check that. Hold on. So I can actually answer the now since I'm here anyway. Oh, I just oh. barely saw on the YouTube stream. We're all sitting on a couch. That's so cute. Okey oh, look at how sweet. That's so cute. <laughs> I managed to squeeze you can't all in Mr. together. <laughs> yeah. Can't say Mr. Nice D doesn't job. put on a good show. I try. I try. Let's check. Uh, I like the, uh, so you say the you have a question. Hat. Yeah, you can just okay. jump on stage if you want to, Derps. Alrighty. Um... So, what really inspired you, in a way, to have this type of fan-made crossover of Elements of Justice? Like, who or what? For me, because I didn't originally make this, and I need to make that clear distinction, I may have failed to do so. Um, I'm not the original creator, I'm now the owner. I've taken ownership recently. Um, but... Um, for me, why I wanted to keep this thing going and when, you know, it was kind of put into my hands, I love Turnabout Storm. It was a really, it was one of those kind of moments where something appears in your life and you're like, oh, this is cool. This is the right place, right time for you to get really deep into something. Um, and when, uh, when I learned about the sequel back in 2020, I initially kind of for lack of a better term, ignored it. <laughs> and then eventually it came time for some assistance and then I dived into the sort of rabbit hole that was joining EOJ and is a rabbit hole because once you get started, I trust trust me, there's very few times you want to get off the bandwagon even when things get crazy. Um, I just wanted to see a story come to life in a way that I don't think has happened probably uh, for ages. Um, i you know not sure how many other people within the team uh, share that necessary because I'm sure everyone's got their own reason for being here. But for me, I I have faith that what we're producing is going to, it may not necessarily be uh, like during the period of uh, the fandom's history where it was like the biggest and it's the most memor memorable or, you know, that. But I think we're going to be producing one of the damn finest pieces of media that can come from, you know, two pieces of uh, media crossing together. And that to me is what motivates me to keep going is that I know that this is going to be bloody awesome. And I'm not going to stop. <laughs> um, I'll open that question up to the rest of the team, though, because I do want to hear what motivates them to keep going as well. Sure, sure. I'll, I'll start on that. Like, I think, like, what keeps me, like, motivated to go on this project is that, like, I think, like, both of these fandoms, like, elevate each other in just the right way to where, like, they pretty much, like, have the same vibe across the board. They're very excited about, like, what their characters can and like the interactions between uh sort of like what we're doing and like where we're going is incredibly exciting and i feel like people are going to continue to like just explore the space in this way where both are totally fine at like standalone points but when you like put them together it creates like a very nice like niche possibility that we're very much exploring, mm -hmm. and that's what keeps me going throughout this like project. I love exploring the space here. Really good. Yes. Um, I think as a voice actor, the way I see it, because My Little Pony ended, it's kind of up to the fandom voice actors to keep the characters alive. And I'm not going to take credit for writing or creating the stories, but we do bring the characters to life by voicing them. So that's what motivates me, is keeping the characters alive. Uh, well, the original creator may not be here, and, and I don't mean to speak for him, but uh, I do remember him saying how he had seen so many people try to make the sequel to Turnabout Storm, and they never succeeded. And I think he just said, well, I think I could do it. And boy, that was a statement. <laughs> how many years ago now? Like, what, 
uh, eight, maybe? Oh, God, there's nine, nine yeah. or ten, yeah. Eight, like, nine? coming on yeah. ten. It's decades. <laughs> saying you can do it is not necessarily the same as saying, as being able to do it. There's so many people like, oh, I want to make a project. And then they go into it and they're like, oh, God, managing people. It's hard. Yeah, it's really difficult to get people moving, to find people, make connections, but you can do it. And that's honestly one of the reasons that motivate, motivated me when I joined is because I really wanted to connect with my community, make dreams happen like this one. There's so many projects where the biggest failing is that people aren't helping. They're not, there's not enough help to go around. There's not people volunteering. They don't know about it. So I always try to get involved, I, or at least I used to when I had uh, more time on my hands, but I would try to get involved in projects so I could be that person that helps bring it to life if possible. Of course, more than one person can handle. And of course, I was a big fan of Turnabout Storm as it was coming out, as I'm going to show my fandom age, uh, as I was around when it was coming out. And it was so fun watching it come out and seeing the story evolve. And it was like the coolest thing ever. So to get a chance... To actually be a part of that, to be a part of history that um, I was definitely not of the age or skill to be involved in, or even at the right time or place, I definitely would never have made it, uh, unlike today. But um, it was like the coolest thing ever. And then they're like, oh, we need help with animation. I'm like, I'm an animator. And that was the coolest thing ever, because that was the first time I really saw my work come together in a project and be put out there and be adored by people and it was the coolest thing ever and they're like oh we need help with art we need help with uh internal affairs we need help with this and that and i'm always there to help and it's really wonderful to see how that help builds in a really wonderful project uh that's really why i love doing this stuff because it's so fulfilling to make these fr lasting friendships to build these communities and have memories that last a lifetime oh also the experience is nice <laughs> yes, by the way, we do actually have fun here once in a while, uh, <laughs> which Peeps does help with. It's my job. <laughs> fun is my job. Um, any other one else from the team want to add anything to that? I guess I should have said I'm the team leader of, uh, or yeah, I am the team leader of internal affairs, but that's besides the point. I meant to say that earlier and I didn't. <laughs> I think, no, I think we do love improv. Pretty well. <laughs> I don't know what else to add. <laughs> There's nothing else to add. It's all, it's all, it's all nice and simplified. Uh, well, there you go. Hope that answers your question, Derps. Oh yeah, definitely. Thank you so much for it. And you, you guys keep being yourselves with this. I absolutely love this. Uh, Aww, thank, thank you. you, thank you very uh, much. Uh, Greatly appreciate you. that. Right. Thank you. Right. Uh, any other questions from anywhere on the? We're happy to answer. There were two questions on the uh, thing. On the YouTube thing, Roger. Okay. Uh, if yeah. no one has anything in the Discord, what was the questions from the YouTube? Oh, the, I don't know if this counts as a spoiler, but I'll read it anyway, I guess. Okay. Uh, okay. Is Luna working back to back on the cases? So is she flying back and forth between Manhattan and the, they said, military air force base? And I was like, the Wonder Bolt. <laughs> That's pretty much it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so they're asking if she's going to be working on both cases and if she's going to be flying back and forth between them. <laughs> and I was like, that's a very funny image, personally. So I wanted to read the question out. And that was from it says trouble. Uh, Sean Full Dark, I believe. <laughs> um, oh, you're tempting me. <laughs> I want that image to be a reality now. Um, I was like, she has magic too. She can just teleport. <laughs> teleport through. Uh, I mean, she is a prince. Yeah, she is a prince. Think... Luna's She's super old school it. though, so she'll just fly places. She's not going to just <laughs> teleport <laughs> wherever. We don't need no Good fancy man. zeppelins or hot air balloons. <laughs> when I got wing. Yeah. We don't need no fancy zeppelins. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, <wait. laughs> I don't get it. I'm sorry. I'm uncultured when it comes to music. Never oh, sing no. a song. Never sing a never song in front sing of me. Never again. <laughs> I, well, no, I will never ask you for that after the wonderful performance you gave for the credits. So please do sing, just not in front of me, because I will never get it. <laughs> no. Um, to answer the question in the best way I can, um, uh, there is a distinct possibility that Luna will definitely be participating 
And that's the most I'm going to say without oh, wow. trying to give her stuff again. It <laughs> um, was pretty good. That was better than I was going to say. I'm hungry for more. So, yeah, no, Damn it's an it. answer. My thing disconnected. I didn't get to hear it. Ah, <laughs> you'll never know the secrts of EOJ yeah! now, Cadet. <laughs> Curse you, I, technology. I the recipe is. <laughs> uh, any other questions, as I say, from the Discord directly can be typed, can be up on the stage. And if there's a Twitter, uh, not a Twitter, a Twitch thing as well that I am not aware of, because I, I forgot that that was a thing. There was a thing. There's so many places. I just realized like how many places we're broadcasting this to now in retrospect. Poor internet. EOJ dominating the airwaves. I see another one from Sean that has to do with Twilight. I'm so tempted to read it as Twilight. <laughs> <laughs> so it says, so how many of you have pulled out your Twilight Sparkles and said, may the power of Sparkle compel you. May the power of Sparkle compel you on your Adobe and like or insert your own particular princess. <laughs> I've oh, never Adobe. said that before. Now I have. There you go. It's <laughs> captured go. forever. Beautiful. It's captured forever. Uh, I mean, yeah, Adobe. Or I want to go so much in depth into why that mach- that software is painful. Um, but I would be speaking on behalf of people who have actually engaged in it. I mean, off the top of my head, Peeps, you've had the joy of having fun with it once or twice. Um, Me? Oh. Adobe Animate. <laughs> I've had my share share, yep. Yeah. <laughs> it's a program. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, if you ever want to hear horror stories, ask anyone who's done video editing or animating for EOJ, and I'm sure you'll get an answer. Either that or you'll see them running for the hills in the opposite direction at like 500 miles per hour because they just don't want to remember it whatsoever. I will say, uh, rigging in Adobe, and you can, we can all complain about Adobe as much as we <laughs> want. But at least it's not like the branching trees of Toon Boom. Oh. <laughs> um, we've got a question from the Twitch. Do you ever fall into characters, either MLP or non-MLP in conversational meetings? All the time. Heck yeah. All the time. <laughs> yeah. Oh my yeah. gosh. Um, Apple Jack is the first voice that I could like nail in terms of like uh, uh, the lilt and the way that she like flows because that's sort of how I flow in my sentences already. Um, <laughs> and I was doing the like the southern accent just in general for like ever, <laughs> forever before before I fully like got into the show. So I was like, oh gosh, this is literally just how I like. Sometimes I'll just when I'm experiencing a malfunction in regards to like computer work or something, I'm like. I can't get this dang doohickey to work. Like, it's oh literally just, I just burst into the voice out of nowhere. It's great. It happens awesome. all the time. All the time. <laughs> For me, it's not even like, okay, so I do Twilight every day, kind of the way you do Applejack every day. But even though I don't really do Fluttershy, sometimes when I get frustrated, I just say her little, ah, just so peeved right now. <laughs> and it makes me feel better. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it helps a lot. <laughs> It de escalates. <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, we got another question from YouTube. Uh, oh, okay. One second. I think, uh, I think oh, people sorry. need to quickly jump yeah. in there. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, whenever I try to, like, if I, like, you know, mockingly read something or try to make a Braddish voice, I do slip into Diamond Tiara because. Oh, God. You no. Know, it's so hard not to sound like Diamond Tiara when I sound like a brat. <laughs> T. Oh, my gosh, oh, yeah. silly. <laughs> oh, see? I and then they're down. Though it's not EOJ related. So I do Chrysalis. Uh, my voice can get definitely low enough, and it definitely comes out when I evil laugh. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, do. my God. That's terrifying. Oh, yeah. I can evil laugh. <laughs> I do a lot of villains, funnily enough. Uh, Chrysalis is one of the favorites, of course, because. Oh, I love how bratty she can be. And like in the best way. She's over the top. Yeah. She's a brat. We love her. We love her. Oh, and ruthless too. So ruthless. Alright. <laughs> see that YouTube as, question. As you can see, there is a lot of enjoyment from being the characters in the series. I never consider it oh, myself. Yeah. But uh, it's great to see that everyone loves it. Um, question. Yes. Sorry. Wow. Next question. Uh, from, from George Garza Productions, he said, as myself, 
producing a crossover series as well, I need to ask, is it hard to work between the production and other aspects like outside life and even <laughs> other projects? Can you find the balance? <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, yeah I work a full-time job. <laughs> I, I work a full-time job, nine to five. Uh, I yeah. do local campaigning. I'm a member of the reserves here in the UK. I'm like all over the place. EOJ mm. is not, doesn't dominate my life, but it certainly takes, sorry, I'm not, EOJ, yeah. I'm not dominated by EOJ in life, but it certainly does dominate my life. And it just, oh, yeah, you've got to have a good structure. You've got to have a good plan, especially when you're running this thing. Um, if you don't know where you're going, if you don't think about, and as I said, you know, the failure to prepare is preparation to failure. If you don't think about what's happening two months down the line, it's going to come back and it's going to hit you in the face. Um, every episode I look at our schedule and I realize, wow, we started this episode in like September last year, which is terrifying because it's like, you would think it would take a month, but no. It's like a six month reduction cycle just to get to where we are. And as I say, we're trying to release an episode every month. So when we, you know, most of the stuff for case three at today, for example, as a bit of a hint, we are currently at like the halfway point in terms of writing for, for case three only today. Um, and like every other aspect of the case, like for the next episodes, next couple of episodes, as I say, were written. March, uh, no, April, May, and then the assets were being produced in June, July. It's just, oh, it's a constant, it's constant movement, movement, movement. So, yeah, if you've got other commitments, prioritize, look after yourself, just get a good schedule, find people you can trust. I rely heavily on my team leaders, my assistant director a lot. Um, Salman's in the channel right, chat right now, actually. Uh, he loves EOJ. Um, <laughs> I, yeah, speaking from the top down, just be prepared for chaos. But uh, if you're in self-acclaimed chaos, chaos alignment, you'll be fine. You'll love it. Everybody else, though, I don't know what you guys feel. <laughs> yeah, uh, I but... mean, yeah, I, I do the full-time job thing, too. And I also do look for other jobs on the side. So I'm like work, work, work all the time. And as a writer for the show, I super feel you on the production timeline as well. Because like mm. the, the writers basically start the production on like what happens with the show. So we do our parts first, which means we start like a year ago and just like a couple months ago, start, stuff started coming out. So like while I'm writing everything, I have to understand that like, yeah, I'm not going to see any of this for like maybe six months until it actually gets out. And then I have to continue writing everything, not seeing it go, kind of go through, continue like the rest of my life and just also like continually like apply myself in new areas it gets tough but like uh, eventually like now we're in the state where like we are releasing stuff and it's gotten like way easier so for example i've started telling people that i'm a writer of this show now which beforehand i couldn't because nothing was out yet and now that we actually have episodes like one and two out of case three i can be like yes I i've been doing stuff for like last year and on the side you can see it it's fully produced now we we got here baby we got here boom. uh it got yes boom it's great um and yeah, it's it's gotten easier. It wasn't great at first, but it's gotten way easier. <laughs> oh yeah, I had a similar um, issue with uh, not being able to say I was Sonata because it wasn't really announced yet. <laughs> so I was kind of like chilling. It's obviously like like one of like I feel like it's third to last stage. Obviously, voice acting, but like I was still kind of oh god, I've been here years and i haven't been able to say anything yet <laughs> <laughs> oh which sucks i can't imagine i would i would be breaking all the ndas if i had a role of any capacity i'm the worst at keeping Aww. secrets <laughs> uh, uh, yeah that's the trouble of work to uh project balance is definitely tough uh speaking of someone who's trying to run two projects at the same time it's hard to balance it's hard to stretch myself thin like that, especially with all the work I do for EOJ. Um, it's something you just kind of have to figure out and feel as you go. Obviously, planning helps. Uh, planning out uh, times where you can work, times where you can rest uh, helps if that works. It, it doesn't really work for me, sort of. I've tried. I do try to make a list. Making lists helps. 
lists always help me as well as listing out where I am like progress wise seeing a number go up is the most satisfying thing to human brains that's why idle games are so popular so incorporate that in your work uh show yourself how things are going and if you have an idea where things are how easy something is versus how hard how far along something is it can help you balance that work better in my opinion than just trying to siphon out time to do certain things because if you know how much time you have in the moment how far along something is how much you need when it's due that can really help you balance out your time when you know the information that's going to help you find the time to do everything. It's really just a matter of when is it due? How urgent is it, is it to get this done? When does it need to get done? All those important questions that will make it much easier to balance out your schedule. It's doable as long as you're also measuring out the work. Like for consider the questions about project work. Best thing you can do is reduce your work as much as possible. And I don't mean finding help. I mean, going through your script and making sure you don't have a lot of assets. That's another thing. Go through your script. See how many assets you'll need for that episode. And it's like, oh, gosh, this is so much. Uh, maybe we should tone it down so it's easier to manage. Do what you physically can do. Do not plan over plan for things you cannot do or do not have the people for or do not have the time for. Make it Keep it simple, stupid. That's the, it's kiss, right? Keep it simple, stupid. <laughs> Remember to kiss. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And then the only other thing that I would add is just set healthy boundaries as early as possible. Um, you have to take care of yourself, like PPW was saying mm. in her presentation. 100%. Um, if you run yourself ragged, then you won't be able to do anything. So just don't let yourself get to that point. The if you're hearing is, voices. Uh, if you're hearing oh, voices, you're too stressed. Oh, please oh, rest. Okay. <laughs> it's true. It's a thing that happens. Too stressed, please rest. <laughs> <laughs> I was also going to say once once <laughs> something changes, letting people know as soon as possible. Communication. Yeah. Oh yeah, communication. Oh yes, as I say, it's the top secret Which ingredient to our secret. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if, I yeah. think for a lot of people here communication is probably one of those things that we've had to work on the most um from every single angle uh, myself included so yeah if uh, <laughs> communicate people please um okay i'm gonna grab the next question because i don't want to run out of time because it's a really good question the question is like i know adobe is difficult to use but why not use an alternative like toon boom or blender that's a really really good question why not Okay, the short and simple answer is we have to rebuild everything. Like, not even, like, I'm not even joking when I say everything. I mean, all the rigs, all the processes, all the procedures, all the ways in which we do rendering, it would just have to be scrapped from the ground and just work its way up. Would we get a much more friendlier software? Yes. But it would also mean that we would have to start engaging with any potential problems in that software. And whilst I don't like the idea of a sunk cost fallacy at this point, we are kind of stuck in a sunk cost fallacy. And the only real way to get ourselves out of that sunk cost fallacy is to ironically enough, dig deeper into the hell that we found ourselves and just try and make something work of it, which is where the wonderful GitHub and the wonderful uh, repository of um, code that has been made for the, uh, for the production just saves everything. Um, if we use something else as well, we'd be moving further away from the main show style. And one of the big things that we do try to do, and we've been doing our best to try and improve upon each and every time, is just keeping that level of consistency. We want to try and replicate the show and try and give it as much of a, I don't want to say like, you know, one to one, but people are going to find more enjoyment seeing something that they know is the same or near similar. Uh, as, 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 you know, old coins used to be called well-made in essence. They aren't the same. They are definitely not the same, but they look just as good enough. Um, and for us, that's a key, that's a key goal. Using something like Toon Boom uh, or Blender is great because, yeah, they work. But again, the animation style is very noticeably different. Um, and that's fine. I, I, quite, I quite love the fact that people are able to use it. Um, but for us, it just won't work. It just won't work. So we've, 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 as I say, we've built processes, we've built code, we've got new procedures. Someone said, why not use After Effects? Uh, we do use After Effects um, because we don't get some of the fancy effects that we use without After Effects. 
Um, and that in itself is a whole level of chaos because we've got to transition stuff from the Adobe Animate software into After Effects and then into Premiere Pro for the final render. So there's a free stage process of just messing things around. I think recently we've been able to remove the After Effects process. I'm not entirely sure. I'm going to have to, um, you know, I'm going to have to check with my, my assistant director, Salman, because he actually understands the technicalities a little better than I do. But we are simplifying it a bit by bit. Um, so that's the answer to your question, as best I can say. We'd love to. We just really can't. <laughs> that's the worst can part I about give, it. Wait, can I give the animator answer? <laughs> oh, yes, please do. Share, share us your pain, oh, oh animator. <laughs> okay, so why Adobe? MLP is initially G4, it's made in Adobe. So, and I know because I've heard this from the director and even uh, other people who were trying this, they tried OpenTunes, they tried all the free stuff cannot replicate what Adobe does. Adobe was the only option. Blender is more 3D program. 2D is possible, but with effort. And Toon Boom, less I say about rigs in that program, the better. Uh, so, you know, it's just like, there are other, there are free options. Yes. Are they viable? Not exactly for what our purposes was. The point was to get, create as close to a show style as possible. And I think even the original Turnboss Storm used a really old version of Flash for that reason as well. It's just Flash is just the best option. Also, because animators like to be paid, professional ones, the ones who know what they're doing, um, and we have to rely on volunteer people who may not, you know, have as much experience working in those programs. Toon Boom rigging, ugh. Open Tunes, less I say for newbies, the better. It takes effort to learn those types of programs and the ways we need to use it. Adobe is easy for beginners. It was made for beginners. It's very straightforward and how it works so if we want to bring in someone's like hey i want to try being an animator and i have the capabilities of learning the program I'll be like all right come on in we'll show you how it works and so far we did that with uh, some of our team members where they switched over and they're doing excellent and it's just amazing to see how they went from uh, one animation way to another so that's why it's we need to use adobe it's not because there are no other options it's because for our purposes that's the program that works best but we do use other programs other than adobe stuff for different aspects as i'm familiar yes i'm pretty sure yes absolutely bang on there like adobe illustrator for some stuff we use edition i mean we are stuck with adobe by the by, you know, by default but we do use a wider range of packages in other areas as well um but yeah, it's a shame. Um, but what can you do except build code? And as I say, like once again, I have to praise the automation team because genuinely, this would not be happening. That one month goal would not happen without the automation team. Like that's not even a uh, that's not even a joke. I don't think we could have even considered it without it. So uh, massive kudos to uh, one two three Connor Poop um, Pretzelman, also the vo who was the voice of Private Eye for anyone that's curious, uh, and Salman again for the wonderful wonderful contributions we've got five minutes so i want to try and get to the rest of the questions briefly uh we've got a few from the chat and there's one good one here that i want to get to as well so from the youtube um someone's asked about what the favorite project they've done you've done outside of eoj quick answer from anyone here from if they want to shout out any particular projects sure um so uh, oh god go ahead Okay, great. Oh. Uh, so oh. that'll be Zana's. That'll be Zana's guide to magic coffee. That was my Kickstarter project for a while. Love doing that. Brilliant. Um, for me, it would oh. probably be. I have so many favorites, but Study of the Mind Elve by Gabby Shy was really, really fun. I got to play Twilight in that, and it was the first time that I voiced alongside Lost Narrator and Magpie. So that was like a dream come true. Oh Amazing. gosh, what haven't been I been involved in? Uh, there's one uh, that started off as one project, but it's now called Shine Through the Shadows, where I met some lovely people who I'm happy to call friends, dear, dear friends. Uh, it was cool working with Dr. Wolf on the anger management for villains, and I found out I could do Cozy Glow. That was pretty cool. Uh, I enjoyed voicing for the color goddess and the demon's daughter by Muse Script. I need to catch up with that series. Whew um obviously my own projects i enjoy working on my own but i'd rather talk about other projects i've been in uh, oh, oh element of kindness i loved working on element of kindness uh lovely director and also the hearts warming specials i did for this one person ah oh, shoot i don't know if i can remember the name on the spot and i want to make sure we have time um uh, but that and also this one called blood trees with uh zephyr i also did a cool poetry thing 
uh, along uh, in the future with that uh, experimental poetry is Twilight. A uh, voice I don't often get to do because I'm not super great at it, especially not like arts. Oh my goodness, such a talent. Oh, stop. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I guess uh, the one that I'm. Oh. No, go ahead. I'm, I'm, I don't need to say anymore. <laughs> okay. There, uh, there's like two, I guess. Uh, I'm part of this group of like content creators called Fanfickle Entertainment. I really like working with them. We're all just a bunch of balls. Uh, and there's a new one where it's <laughs> FNAF based, and I voice Roxanne and Wolf in that. Uh, uh, and it's like uh, 3D animated uh, by Smithy, I believe is their name on. But those are really fun. They've been really fun so far. Brilliant. Thank you. I see the panels is arriving, so we need to wrap this up. Just got a couple more questions then to take, because there's two I really want to do, and there's one more thing I need to quickly get out there. Uh, James, one of our writers, has asked me what it's like knowing that EOJ has existed as a project for a year longer than the mainline Ace Attorney series being on the hiatus. James, uh, nine o'clock meeting tomorrow in the writer's chat, please, for that question. Um, <laughs> then uh, the... Final question we'll take from the chat before I get onto the last thing I want to share with everyone. Um, is there a good way to help or get involved with the project? Right now, uh, we do have some positions that we desperately want filled, but they need to be experienced. You need to be experienced with them. Uh, these are working with Adobe Animate rigs directly. So having made pony rigs from the ground up, uh, animations, transitions, all of that good stuff. If you have a lot of experience in that, uh, feel free to reach out to myself. Um, and we can discuss and I'll put you in contact with the right people um, and professional audio engineers as well. Um, uh, we, um, we, we've got few already, um, but if you have a good experience in that, if you already are experienced, and again, I, I'm, I'm highlighting experienced, you know, you don't need to be professional, but like if you have a portfolio, that's great. If you're, if people are like, you know, less, um, less experienced, we currently don't have anything available, unlikely to for the rest of K3, because we've got a wonderful team of people. As I say, we're about 70 in total or 65 active at the moment. So it's like, we're really filled up, but if something does pop up, keep an eye on our socials, which I have on the screen via QR codes as a sort of fun little thing. Um, and oh, yeah. as Cadet aptly put, if you want to support, but you don't have the technical skills, join the fan server, get the word out, share, 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 talking about this, letting people know. It's amazing how many people are like, oh, wait, there was a crossover for Ace Attorney and MLP. I love Turnabout Swords. Yeah. Like, we're still here, you know, and we're still going to be going. <laughs> so it's like... Get that word out there. If you know someone who loves Ace Attorney, please just tell them. That does so much for us. Um, and team behind it. Check out their stuff. Check out their places. Get, throw them some love any way you mm. can on their socials and such. Donations. Yeah, yeah. advertise the project on. and promote the team. Yeah. <laughs> right. Now, I can, as I say, I see the clock ticking. i got to get to this last point. So everyone here has been wonderful today. Really, you all have. We need to just quickly go back to this presentation because I'm not finished yet. I have one little thing that I want to share with everybody before we move on. Oh, dear. Is it a meme? Oh, there was actually a title screen for the questions as well. I completely forgot about that. Wow. Uh, so <laughs> I did that a couple times, but I tried to pass it off like I knew it was I, I was doing. Pro tip for present from presenting. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, this isn't the time to ask questions, but... As I say, for everyone being so wonderful and for asking a load of questions and for sticking around, have a little special thanks surprise from me. Uh... <gasps> oh my god, That's is that the right. release of the next episode? It is the release of the next episode. Wow. <gasps> <gasps> is that wow. fabric? World One premiere wow. today. <laughs> so yeah we're really picking boundaries here <laughs> <laughs> in one week's time on the channel at uh three o'clock eastern standard time uh eight o'clock british standard time or summer time will be the next episode of elements elements well elements of justice, uh, justice. <laughs> <laughs> title a gleam of uncertainty so you know it, there's uncertainty of what that may be Ooh. but uh yeah if you've enjoyed today's panel if you've really enjoyed sticking around uh, please do check it out uh for and I, I really want to thank all of my you know participants for attending thank you everyone for listening and asking questions everyone on the youtube channel thank you as well for watching um as is tradition for the youtube we usually end on a rather uh loud shout so until oh, we yeah. take it up any more time 
Uh, are we all ready, team? <laughs> yes, let's do it. All right. So, again, thanks, everyone, for attending. Uh, and without further ado, on the count of three, <laughs> one, two, three. Objection! 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 Objection. <laughs> Ha ha ha!